it's likely going to be the biggest movie of the year, Star Wars The Last Jedi, hitting theaters on Friday, a pop culture juggernaut. Here's a quick look at the film. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. All right, let's bring in our fans here because we got a special panel of Star Wars fans. Brian Bishop is a senior editor at The Verge. He has seen the movie. He is in Los Angeles. And Sarah Dempster is a Star Wars blogger and podcaster who's going to be seeing the movie tonight. She is also in L.A. Brian, let me start with you. You've already seen the movie. No spoilers, but what did you think? Uh, no spoilers. That makes it tough, right? <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think how to, how to phrase this appropriately. I like the movie, number one. Uh, I think it's the most daring Star Wars movie maybe that we've ever seen. Uh, and I think it kind of rethinks the franchise in a lot of interesting ways, but everybody's gonna have to wait till they see it tonight to know it exactly what that means. And Sarah, as a big fan, what are you hoping for in this film as you prepare to go see it? Well, I'm honestly just hoping for something that's gonna take just a new fresh twist on, on the Star Wars mythos and saga. Um, just, you know, taking the story in totally unexpected and different directions. And Brian, I'm curious, you know, when you're dealing with a franchise that's been around for 40 years, as Star Wars has from 1977, you know, there's so much at stake here for Disney, for Lucasfilm, and of course, for the fans who go into this kind of thing, really hoping they're gonna like it, they wanna like it, but they're also very picky, nitpickers, when it comes to the Star Wars mythos. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting balancing act, right? Because in the olden days, it used to be a movie every three years, and then it went away for a decade plus. Now you've got a new movie every year, and for that to work, for that to be part of Disney's long-term strategy, you have to mix it up. You know, like Sarah was saying, you have to make it fresh and interesting and kind of new. Um, and for that to work, it requires bringing in new voices, and I think that was what was behind a lot of the, the reason to bring in Ryan Johnson to write and direct the film, uh, who's a kind of different filmmaker that's tackled this franchise before. Um, but it's definitely the focus of this film, is, is rethinking what's happened before. But also, it does deliver on what you expect. It does feel like a Star Wars movie more than anything else. And, Sarah, for you, what are you concerned about here? Uh, you know, we were talking about how Star Wars fans can be hard to please. Uh, those original uh, three prequels that came out uh, did not go over very well with fans, as you're familiar. Uh, I'm curious whether you're kind of holding your breath as you get ready to see it. Well, I mean, well, first off, I'm actually a huge prequel fan, so I feel like I might not be quite as nitpicky as uh, some other fans might be out there. But, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm just nervous because, especially with characters like Luke and Leia, you know, they've been part of my life since I was, you know, three or four years old. So just wanting to see their stories told in a way that I feel is true to the character is, I feel... Probably the biggest concern I have, but I also really trust what I've seen from Ryan Johnson and what I've like read in interviews and whatnot. So I'm like nervous, but mostly excited. One of the other big things for this, Brian, of course, is the marketing and the merchandising. And you know, you already see the folks at Disney capitalizing on this. Uh, again, without giving too much away, is there is there too much sort of cheap marketing trying to sell toys? Uh, you know, by introducing characters and, and situations where you know you, you, it, it kind of feels like a ploy. Yeah, I, I don't think so at all. I think the one thing that maybe people could could point to in that regard would be would be Porgs, obviously. Um, those little like you know penguin kind of looking creatures. And I think that's simply because we've already seen so much about porgs, right? You can go to Target and get a, a huge six foot plush stuffed porg as a, as a gift when you bought a, a Star Wars toy a couple months ago. Um, within the movie though, I think it, you know, there is no, you know, Ewok syndrome. I didn't have a problem with Ewok, but some people look at the Ewoks and return of the Jedi and that was kind of cheesy, shoved in. I don't feel that way about anything in Last Jedi. There's no Jar Jar syndrome when there's a character like that where you feel it was kind of just created just to go and, and sell something. Uh, every character, you know, pretty much earns their place in the narrative this time. I want to ask you as well, if I can, Sarah, about this notion of, you know, female protagonists, because you've got Rey, who is really kind of anchoring uh, this new imagining of Star Wars, uh, originally with The Force Awakens, now in The Last Jedi. But you also have Carrie Fisher in her final role as uh, Princess Leia, now General Organa. How are you going to feel seeing her uh, portraying this character for the final time? Oh, I know that I'm going to be an absolute mess as soon as Carrie Fisher shows up on screen. 
you know, I've been watching all the movies over the past couple of weeks in preparation and just thinking about how this is the last time we're really going to see Leia. It just really kind of hits you really hard. How do you think this movie will do, Brian? You've seen it. No doubt you're going to see it again. Is it going to be the biggest movie of the year? Uh, I mean, I think all signs point, point in that direction. It's, uh, you know, Star Wars, we, we talked about last time we spoke, Star Wars continues to be this property where, where once a year it becomes the cultural, you know, conversation starter. Uh, this movie delivers in so many ways, and it is also fresh in so many ways. It's the kind of movie that really demands you go back and see it again, uh, you know, second, third, even fourth time. Star Wars fans would do normally, uh, but this time there's actual real substance to kind of think about, dig into, observe. Um, I'm seeing it again tonight for the second time with my wife, just to, if that to give you an indication. So, um, yeah, I think it's people are going to be seeing this movie a lot. One final thing for you, Sarah. There was the Rogue One movie that came out last year. The next film after this will be a standalone Han Solo movie as well. Do you like those standalone movies, or do you like the ones that are still part of this larger arc with the Skywalker uh, and the Darth Vader and the dark side and, and all of that mythology? You know, I was initially unsure about how I felt of this concept of a standalone because to me, you know, exactly, Star Wars has always been about the Skywalker family. But, you know, after seeing Rogue One, which has now become, I think, one of my top three Star Wars movies, it's, it offers an opportunity to explore um, concepts and stories and, you know, characters that you wouldn't necessarily get to do with those um, the Skywalker um episodic stories. I mean, you know, you wouldn't be able to revisit the the Death Star timeline if you're trying to, to do an episode, you know, 3.5 or whatever, because the characters have all aged out and or the actors have all aged out. And so these standalones, I think, offer an opportunity to get different types of movies too, different kind of genres and fields for the Star Wars universe. Very well said. Thanks to both of you for coming on the program. May the force be with you guys. Thank you. May Thanks. the force be with you.